I'm not ashamed. What can we learn from Peter's denial of Jesus? This is the question that we seek to answer today as we continue our verse-by-verse -verse study of the book of Luke on Walking Through the Bible. If you have a Bible with you, you can turn to Luke 22. We're going to be reading from verses 54 to 62. If you don't have a Bible, don't worry. Just follow along with us on the screen. The version that we'll be reading from is the New King James Version. So Luke 22, beginning at verse 54. Having arrested him, they led him and brought him into the high priest's house. But Peter followed at a distance. Now when they had kindled a fire in the midst of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat among them. And a certain servant girl... Seeing him as he sat by the fire, looked intently at him and said, This man was also with him. But he denied him, saying, Woman, I do not know him. And after a while, another saw him and said, You are also of them. But Peter said, Man, I am not. Then after about an hour had passed, another confidently affirmed, saying, Surely this fellow was with him, for he is a Galilean. But Peter said, Man, I do not know what you are saying. Immediately, while he was still speaking, the rooster crowed. And the Lord looked and turned and looked at Peter. Then Peter, remembering the word of the Lord, how he had said to him, Before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. So Peter went out and wept bitterly. In this chapter, there has been much going on, even though the events occur in about a day's time. The chapter began with the chief priests plotting to kill Jesus and Judas offering his services to them to get the job done. This probably occurred on Wednesday or Thursday of that week. Then at the beginning of what the Jews would call Friday, what we would call Thursday night, Jesus gathered with his disciples for one final meal where he instituted the Lord's Supper, a memorial of his death that Christians would observe in the church since its creation at Pentecost. After all of these things were done, Jesus went to the Garden of Gethsemane to pray. He prayed that if it be the Father's will, that the Father would remove the agony he was experiencing at that time. The Father did not remove that agony. However, he did send an angel to strengthen Jesus during this time. Soon after he was done praying, Judas brought a band of soldiers, and Jesus was arrested. From here, Matthew and Mark move right to Jesus' trial and leaves the, leave the denials of Peter until the end, Luke, however, puts Peter's denials first, and then will deal with the trial in the verses to follow. Why the difference? Perhaps it is because Luke presents more of a chronology of the night. Peter's denials of Jesus and Jesus' trial occur simultaneously. Moreover, Peter's denials didn't occur all at once. They occurred throughout the night. Perhaps then, Peter's first denial happened before the trial of Jesus, while John will show us that the other two denials occurred later in the evening or early morning. Therefore, Luke, wanting to keep some sort of a chronology of simultaneous events, began with Peter's denial, and not desiring to break up the context, just went through all three before returning to discuss Jesus' trial. So coming back to our narrative, Luke tells us that when they arrested Jesus, they brought him to the high priest's house, with Peter following at a distance. Peter's first denial occurred as Peter sat around in the courtyard. A servant girl came up to Peter and said, that he was also with Jesus. Now, by saying this, it may very well be that this girl meant him no harm, simply wondering why he didn't go in with his friend. But Peter denied knowing what the girl was saying. In other words, he was denying being Jesus' disciple. The second denial occurred a little while later, and another saw him and said that this man was also with Jesus. Again, Peter denying, denied knowing who Jesus was. Think of it. The man who in chapter 9 had confessed Jesus was the Christ of God was denying that confession as well as knowing Jesus at all. That is certainly quite a change. Luke tells us that the third denial came about an hour after the second denial when one of those who stood by him said that Peter must have been with Jesus for he was a Galilean. How would this person have known that? Because the dialect of the Galilean was easily recognizable. So that he should be present at the trial of Jesus from Galilee certainly would mean that he was with Jesus, as the others involved were from Judea. For the third time that night, Peter said that he did not know who Jesus was. After saying those words, immediately the rooster crowed. Peter, hearing the rooster and remembering the words of Jesus spoken to him only hours before, knew what he had done, so he went out and wept bitterly. 
Peter obviously had remorse for what he had done, as is evident by him going out and not just weeping, but bitterly weeping. The fruits of his repentance, though, would be seen in what he would do next, for he would preach the gospel of Jesus Christ and never again deny Jesus, even until death. So what lessons can we learn from Peter's denials? Although there could be many, we only have time to discuss two. The first one is that we should not think of ourselves so highly that we believe we cannot fall. 1 Corinthians 10 verse 12 says, Therefore let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he fall. Some Christians today vow and declare that if they were there, they would not have abandoned Jesus or denied him. From other gospel accounts, all of the apostles thought the same thing too, and yet they abandoned Jesus and Peter denied him. Who is to say that when put in the same situation, we wouldn't have done the same thing? The other lesson we can learn is that when we sin, we can be forgiven. One might think that denying Jesus is the worst thing that we can do, and it certainly ranks near the top, if not at the top. But if we repent and ask God for forgiveness, 1 John 1 verse 9 says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Notice that John says all unrighteousness, not some unrighteousness, not a little unrighteousness, all unrighteousness. Peter did a horrible thing, but Jesus forgave him because Peter repented. He can do the same for us as well. With that, our time is up for today. The Lord will only hope you'll join us for tomorrow's discussion of Luke chapter 22, verses 63 to 71, as we continue our walk through the Bible, one verse at a time. I'm not a Thank you for watching today's episode. We hope that you found it edifying and ask that you not only subscribe to our channel and podcast, but that you like and share this episode among your friends so that the saving gospel of Jesus Christ can go out to the whole world.